Steelers camp. George Pickens picking the brain of Super Bowl 43 MVP, Santonio Holmes. Boy, that kid's got a ton of talent. Oh, my gosh. Pickens. He could, break out. he could bust out. How's that tandem going to go? Let's find out. Mike Tomlin sitting down with our Judy Batista in Latrobe, PA. Pittsburgh Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin, thanks for joining us. I know it's only three days in, but how are you feeling about your team right now? I feel really good. I do. Um, and, and, and there's some tangible reasons why. First of all, everybody showed up in, in really good condition and, and physical readiness, and that's a component of it. The next thing is is that, you know, I see them doing the formal and informal things that you want to see at this juncture. Um, guys have an appropriate level of urgency. Guys are teaching one another and each other, not only about assignments, but how we go about our business, the culture that we're trying to build here in, in 2023 and their roles in it. And so it's just kind of cool to walk around in the midst of all the formal things that are going and seeing the guys em embrace the responsibility of some of the informal teaching and learning. And I think that's something that the destination camp gives you. We realize that we're in the minority of teams that, that still go away to camp, but we value it and, and I see it. And, and we thoughtfully do things to encourage it. You have made clear you would like on your offense to see more explosion, chunk plays. But on the other hand, a, a, there's always going to be a power running element to a Pittsburgh Steelers team. So how do you balance those? It seems to be in competition, those interests. It, it's less of a balance in, in terms of the power running and more about minimizing negativity. As you search for splash plays, you open yourself up to more negativity. And we had a rookie quarterback a year ago. You got to be mindful of getting him behind the chains and him absorbing and the collective absorbing too much negativity when they're young. We, he's a little bit older now. We're a little bit older now. And it's more just about more calculated risk taking in an effort to to get a desired outcome. Uh, but that's just a fact. As you search for chunk plays, the potential for negativity is, is probably more prevalent. And uh, we just weren't interested in a whole bunch of negativity a year ago. You said uh, about Kenny, you said he has to be what we need him to be. What do you need him to be? Good. <laughs> um, we need him to do <laughs> fundamental things well. Uh, we need him to take care of the football. We need him to communicate. Um, I'll never ask him not to be himself, but be his best self. Smile in the face of adversity. You understand his perspective oftentimes is his unit's perspective and own that component of the job. And he's at a good place to kind of absorb some of those things. A year ago, he was really focusing on, on surface level things, uh, assignment responsibilities and so forth. And, and now he, because of his experience, he probably has a perspective where we can add to his to-do list and he's absorbing more of the responsibility that comes with, with being here. Him, and that's what I meant by it. Uh, on the other side of the ball, you added Patrick Peterson, who I know you have long liked as a mm -hmm. player. What's he going to bring to an already stellar defense? Forget his talents and his playmaking ability. Um, just being around him day to day is exactly what I've heard over the years, <laughs> and I'm excited about experiencing. Um, he's a quality human being and professional, one that these guys kind of grew up on in some instances, and for them to be shoulder to shoulder with him day to day and see the reality of him, to see how professional he is, to see how dialed in and how much he loves football, um, it's just an asset to us, not only his playmaking, but all of those all of those other components of it. Uh, reminds me so much of Joe Hayden when we re acquired him a number of years ago mm -hmm. and the intangible things that he brought along with his talents. One last question. 17 seasons. You've never had a losing season. Are you going to do it another 17? I've probably seen more days than I'm going to see. I'm just trying to be realistic in this oh, thing. Oh, no. <laughs> are you, you're not making an announcement, are you? I'm making an announcement that I'm probably not going to do 34. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not holding you to that, actually. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Good to Appreciate see you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Judy and Coach Tomlin. I, I thought every Steelers coach coached 34 seasons. It just only feels that way with Chuck Cole, yeah. Bill Cower, and now Mike Tomlin. Um, no team wants to be the one that won the offseason, but everything the Steelers did, free agency mm -hmm. and draft-wise, made sense to surround this guy and build this team up. I suppose the question is, can you be a defensive team first? and have your quarterback just be okay, or does this kid, number eight, Kenny Pickett, have to move to a new level? Well, I, th I think he's going to go to a different level, Chris. I mean, if you just look at the end of the season last year, and he took the, the ball down the field against the Raiders to win the game uh, you know, late in the year on a sub-zero night, and then the following week went to Baltimore 
took the team down the field in the final minute to beat the Ravens. Like, we saw some some of that. I'm not calling it magic, but two fourth-quarter comebacks moments. in back-to-back weeks. There were some moments where you go, all right, he doesn't look like a rookie right now. And what they do? They went out and got Isaac Sayamalo from the Eagles, a priority free agent. Nate Herbig, they drafted Broder Jones. They've got competition up front because they got to get better up front than they were. And now I think Pickens here, too. They had a good connection last year, Pickens and Pickens. But, you know, the, the offense has to get better, period. And so, you know, he's going to be under the spotlight for much of the year. But I, I feel like he had the whole offseason. He knows the offense. Like, he's very mature. He just got married in Jersey, in the Jersey Shore. I remember what he was talking Did about. Did you get him anything? I didn't get him anything, but I heard it, like, all the way in South Jersey, up on the Jersey. Wow. They talking Big about talk. That. Big talk. Yeah. Uh, this is still a defensive team first. Very much. So I suppose the question is, with Mahomes, Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Herbert, Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, I'll continue on and on with that much talent at that position. How good does he have to be if they want to compete with those teams? Well, I mean, you want to be a playoff team, you're going to have to take your game up. Like, I don't know how good. Like, he's going to be a second-year player, but I think we're going to see a big jump from him. But defensively, they've got the horses to really rattle the cages of the quarterbacks that you just mentioned week in and week out. Well, defensively, we know that they can do it. All they got to do is keep T.J. Watt on the field. It is such a difference when he is yeah. out there. Last year, 8-2. and two, They allowed less than 17 points Going per game when he was there. 1-6 and six without him. All right. Uh, okay. Speaking All right. of coaching up, we'll relive our early go, moments out here in Aquathar, <laughs> California. That away, Jane. Yeah. Flex it. I was struggling with my Yeah, you did your thing. Well, we'll relive yeah. it. Coming up. Well, I mean, she